Jeremy Cook here, and recently I bought a circular saw. But that's not really what this video is about. Along with a circular saw, it came in a package with a wireless drill. This cordless drill, I thought if I was going to use it, well, I needed some place to mount it. Some place that I knew it was that I could get at a moment's notice. I've already got a plug-in drill from DeWalt, so I figured if I'm going to really take advantage of this, what I need is, is some way that I can just have it at the ready, ready to go whenever I need it. I can take it to some remote location or just use it at a moment's notice. To facilitate this, I designed a 3D printed holder for it based on the body's dimensions. I'm measuring the drill chuck here, and I was actually pleasantly surprised at how well this came out on the first revision. Granted, I made a second revision on this, but I probably could have used the first one if I was in a pinch. Here's the first revision that I made. It's actually matched up pretty well to that when I stick it in. The back is straight and I kind of wanted that to be at an angle and I also printed this horizontally so there's some really nasty stuff on the bottom that I didn't really feel like cleaning up. You can kind of see it there. Here's the second revision. I did the profile of the inside, then I did a revolve to make the angled hole. After that I did an extrude for another circle on the top so it'd be kind of like a stepped stepped uh, ledge. Then after that, I put a cavity in the front so that you'd have a place for the trigger. After that, a few radi radii and fillets, etc., etc., made it look a little bit better, maybe a little stronger. Extruded that toward the back so it would fit flush with the wall and then put the angle on there. I thought about putting these, these uh, screw holders to the side but decided to put them on the top and the bottom to better resist the torque of the, of the battery pack sticking out. This worked quite well. A few more fillets to make it better looking and a little stronger. And yeah, I was pretty much pretty much all done with that. You can see the 3D print right now. I thought that print was especially beautiful. It just kind of looks like a wave forming in. And there's the first revision. A little bit nasty and then the second revision looks a lot better. I did finish it with XTC 3D, did that off screen so I suppose suppose I'm cheating a little bit with that one but really looks looks quite good. And fits in nicely and that angle should make it a little bit easier to, to do a quick draw with it. Not that I'll be using it that much. To make this easier to install, I went back to CAD and did, did, did a sketch for the back plane. Click on that and then do finish sketch and then you've got, got just kind of like a profile of the whole thing. If you open that up and save as DXF, you can save that to wherever you want and then import it to Lightburn. Made a, a laser cut cardboard stencil out of that to make it a little bit easier to install. Screws in in the correct position. Now that I think about it, you could just use a regular printer, but what's the fun in that? Gotta set up your dimensions to millimeters because that's what I was working in. Pretty versatile as far as that goes. Then you just do import, import your file, and look at that. Very easy. Speed, set that up to 60 because it's just cardboard that you're cutting out. In fact, as seen here, it makes really quick work of the cardboard. This video is not sped up at all. Cuts through that like butter. Of course, I needed to figure out where it was actually going to be on the wall, so put that up there. Kind of looked at that with the drill on it. Looking good there. Put one mark in for the one side. And then there's the template. Yeah, actually couldn't get it all the way through on the one side, so one of the purposes of the template, I guess. Level, the line on there, and then from there, you've got the line, the dot, and you can make other marks with no problem. One, two, and then the fourth one apparently just kind of got there by itself, by magic. I thought this would be my first, uh, first trial of the Ryobi drill. Works pretty well considering it's cordless. I'm, I was pretty happy with it. Obviously, drilling through masonry is a pretty pretty challenging thing for any drill. 
but I decided that, well, since I've got it, got outlets nearby, I'm going to go ahead and give it a try with the De DeWalt and just see what, see how they compare. It could just be in my mind, but the DeWalt seemed a little bit better. You know, it's corded, so it's going to be, obviously you expect that. Also, the, the bubble level on it is a nice feature to have to make sure you're drilling in straight. Overall, though, I really do like the Ryobi. It seems like a pretty good tool and a nice complement to, to my DeWalt drill. Obviously, they have a little bit different purposes. And speaking of purposes, I thought I would use my Ryobi drill to screw this in since it's got a screwdriver bit that fits right on it, but it doesn't reach all the way in. So I use my long electronic screwdriver, and I guess it just goes to show that no matter how many tools you have, there's usually a purpose for them, as long as you kind of intelligently select which tools you have. So I've got a, a cordless drill, a corded drill, all kinds of... Uh, manual screwdrivers and you know I think it's a good that's a good mix between all of them you know do I need more tools well it's hard to say of course one thing I haven't done yet I I should install the battery pack since I've got this custom holder use the DeWalt drill for this because well got that right there and a little makes it a little bit easier or so so it seems other thing that's nice about that, if I'm using the DeWalt drill, I've got the real B right there so I can actually drill these masonry screws in. So there might be some situation where I want to use both, both drills together. Of course, I didn't use a stencil on this, so or template on this, so I guess hopefully I didn't screw that up too badly. Can I do it? Yep, that's not going anywhere. Plug that in. Oh, not that way. There we go, very good. And the drill goes right above it. A circular saw, I think I'll just leave where it is for now, because I don't think I'll use it quite as much. But with the battery there, I can change batteries out. Who knows, maybe I'll get a glue gun or something to sit beside it in the future. For now though, I can, I can draw it really quickly and should be ready to go at a moment's notice. I'll put a link to the STL in the description, so if you want to do this yourself, feel free. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy Cook, signing off.